All right. Well, we know that last week. So far, if the Sermon on the Mount is a teaching, a sermon that Jesus actually gave, and everything is just so well organized, what's talked about before, the next topic will actually follow. Last week, Jesus told us that adultery is not an a mere act. Adultery begins in the heart. That when we actually commit adultery, it's because in our heart we had already committed adultery. Sort of like when a, a man or a woman nowadays looks at somebody else with lust in her eyes. It's not because they were attracted by the other persons that they already had that lust in their heart. And it's actually consummated when they see the other person. So it's all about what is in the heart. And we're going to see that the same thing applies that adultery, it's no coincidence that Jesus is now speaking about divorce right after adultery. So Jesus is teaching the Sermon on the Mount. He's saying somebody's coming up with some radical ideas. And I've got the New Living Translation. Matthew 5, 31, 32 says that Jesus, when he was teaching, and this is right after he spoke, about whatever causes you to sin, get rid of it. No matter how, how important it is to you. He says if you're to right eye your right hand, because at that time, a right eye and a right hand was deemed to be the most important asset that a person had on their body. It was the most important. So he said, hey, if it's your right hand or your right eye, cut it off. Because it's better for you to get rid of that than to go into hell forever. That's pretty much what he's saying. Now, he doesn't mean literally. It could be anything in our lives. It could be a career. It could be a, a, an illicit relationship. Whatever. It could be our business. Whatever is keeping us from God, we need to cut it off because that can actually end up being what sends us to hell. So all of a sudden he goes on to say, you have heard the law. We'll speak about that. You've heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she's been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. So when we look at this, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty intense. That means if anybody marries a woman that's divorced, is committing adultery. Well, again, we're seeing the difference between the law and grace. We believe that under the law, all we had to do is follow rules. And that it is easier for us to actually sin now because Jesus forgives. But in, in grace, there's a higher standard, if you will. Because Jesus completed the law. We accept Jesus Christ. Now, we are saved because of what Jesus did. So we're actually held to a higher standard because now it's not just the act, it's actually the heart that Jesus is actually speaking about over here. So let's see what, what, what is actually meant by, uh, by what uh, Jesus is trying to tell us over here. First of all, we must understand that during the times of Jesus, when Jesus was, saying, was preaching the sermon, uh, when Jesus was preaching the sermon, there were different schools of thoughts among the Jewish Sex. There were the Pharisees. They were very conservative. Uh, there were the Sadducees. Uh, they were very liberal. They were pretty much aristocrats. They didn't even believe in the afterlife. Uh, they believed that all they had to do was uh, have a good relationship with Rome, and when you die, you die, and that's it. Um, and there were other type of sex, but there were different schools of thought as far as marriage was supposed to be like. So. Uh, what Jesus is saying over here, so you understand, is you have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. Where did that come from? So we must go back and go over to the Old Testament and see where this originated. So if you turn with me to De Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24, Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. And here is when the Mosaic law when Moses brought in a law to cover divorce. Now, once we read it, we have to understand what the spirit of it was and what was taking place. Because at the time, women could just be divorced for any reason, and it was just left at that, pretty much. John and Jane are living together. They're married. 
few years later, John decides, I don't want you anymore. Get out of the house. You're gone. Kicked him out just like that. So here's Jane walking around. Is she married or not? We know that uh, adultery at the time, if committed, required what? Death by stoning to death. So here's a woman that's walking around saying, I'm divorced. But is she divorced? Where's the proof? Her husband could say, hey, I knew who she is. She's a harlot. Look, she's married to me, and now she's over there dating somebody else. Boom, stone her to death. So this was actually what we're going to see right now was more about protecting women, but we see where God's heart is in that. Here's what it says about divorce under the law of Moses that Jesus is speaking about. It says, suppose a man marries a woman, but she does not please him. Having discovered something wrong with her, and this is speaking about sexual immorality of some type, he writes her a letter of divorce, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. When she leaves his house, he's free to marry another man. But if the second husband also turns against her and divorces her, or if he dies, the first husband may not marry her again, for she's been defiled. That would be detestable to the Lord. It says you must not bring guilt upon the land your Lord is giving you as a special possession. So suppose a man marries her. And then he wants a divorce because of some immorality. So there has to be a reason. And it does not use the term adultery. At the time, adultery would end the marriage. You, if, if a woman committed adultery in the Old Testament times, there was no divorce. Because just like that, the man would become a widower because she would be taken out and being stoned to death. So sexual immorality, so what kind of... This sexual immorality, could, in, could it uh, include? Well, it could be various, but here's, here's where it got a little sticky. Because once he has a justification, he's got to give her a written instrument to say, you're divorced. She's free to marry. But the thing is, say later on he changes his mind and he wants her back. Sorry, it's a no-go. So God's plan was not for divorce to be taken place. But the thing is, if you get a divorce, it is over. You are not going back if one of the spouses has been remarried. But this was actually done to protect the women. But sure enough, as men, as people, we like to go ahead and use the law to our own favor. So they went ahead and they had different schools of thought at the time of Jesus. And they're saying, hey, Moses said that if she's not pleasing us for whatever reason, we're going to go ahead and give her a letter of divorce. We don't have a choice. So they were basically telling their women, if you don't please me, I have to divorce you because that's what the law says. I have to. I've got to divorce you, like it or not. So that was one way of actually intimidating women and also gave men the freedom to say, I found another younger one. You're not pleasing me. You're gone. Then there was another school of thought that said, man, you can only divorce your women if there's sexual immorality, okay, and you have that option to divorce or not divorce during sexual immorality. Well, didn't I just say a few minutes ago that in, under the Old Testament, and this is where I hope um, you start getting a better understanding. Under the Old Testament law, if a woman committed adultery, she would be stoned to death. But fast forward to the times of Jesus, and adultery could be committed, and a woman would probably not be stoned to death. Because Rome had taken away from the Jews that right they had to actually uh, implement uh, a capital punishment offense. They would have to go through Rome, and Rome would be the ones that would actually institute a capital punishment. That's why Jesus was, uh, was crucified when he was sacrificed by the Romans and not by the Jews because they didn't have that right. So in the time of Jesus, women would commit adultery, okay, and most likely they would not be stoned to death. But let's go back over to Matthew because here's where we're going to go ahead and see what happens. So now... We need to see what has actually taken place. A year and a half later, go with me to Matthew 19. Pharisees had actually taken what Jesus was preaching and they were comparing it to the law and they were saying, 
we can really get this guy and we've got him now. We're going to go ahead and trap him. We're going to go ahead and trap this Jesus guy because he's been speaking against what Moses has been saying. But we're going to go ahead since we're the, we're the religious lawyers, we are the teachers, we're going to go ahead and use law to trap him up and surely he's going to make a lot of enemies.